Good morning, good morning, Anointed Gates. Good morning, Facebooks. Good morning, Anointed Gates members that's at home, probably with your cap on your head, with your pajamas on, in the bed, watching Facebook. <laughs> Amen. But remember, God said, do not forsake the assembly of the saints, because that is where you gain power. Amen. That's why we gather. That's exactly why we gather. Amen? Amen? Amen. Today the message is, I commit to God. I want you to make it personal. Look at, your, look at somebody sitting next to you and say, I commit to God. That was a little low. I commit to God. Amen. I say it loud. Amen. Because I commit to God. I, I, I say it with a passion because that's truly what I do and that's what I feel. And I won't allow any other things to come into that. The Lord gave me this message um, this morning. Because, see, I, I try not to make up a message. Amen. 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 I asked the Lord, what do you have for your people? And he said commitment. Amen. Commitment. Needs to talk about commitment. Amen. So I went to Webster Dictionary and I looked up the word commitment. Let me make sure you can hear me. I looked up the word commitment and it said the state or quality of dedicating to a cause or an activity. That was just one definition. Then it said a pledge or undertaking. But the third one. I felt represented our relationship with God more. It says an engagement or obligation that restricts freedom of action. Pastor, what are you talking about? Because God has given us a way to live. He has given us instructions. When we commit to him, we have to commit to his ways. You can't commit to him unless you're going to commit to his ways. Amen? The fruit will not be there until we begin to commit to the ways of the Lord. And I wanted to start out with something natural before we went into the scripture because I believe that we all will get this one way or the other. Amen? Commitment is one of the key components for a relationship to be fruitful. Commitment. Without commitment... There is no relationship. Amen. 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 There is not one. You wasting your time. Come on now. And time is too short mm -hmm. to waste. Because tomorrow is not promised to nobody. Right. Amen? Amen. There was a time. Now this might outdate some of y'all, but some of us, we we know this time. There was a time where companies were committed to their workers. And their workers were committed to the company. They had a mutual agreement. Amen? And, and that mutual agreement was, I give you service for compensation. Don't you know if we give God service, we're going to be compensated? When we don't give service, we can't withdraw on a negative account. We have to have something in the bank in order to pull it out. Amen. Right? And one thing about God, his compensation is never low. Right. He's never on a budget. He can make whatever he wants to make happen. Yes. Amen? Amen? There was an exchange back then. People were so happy to tell you about their 30 years of service for their benefit package in their gold ring. Do anybody remember about that? That our parents, that after they worked 30 years, they were getting a gold ring and they were getting a benefit yeah. package and they were so excited about what they had accomplished in their life and they had pride in that gold ring that was given to them for the 30 years of consistent service. Amen. Now let me say this. When... The companies stopped being loyal to the employees. The employees stopped being loyal to the companies. So 30 years and a gold ring went away. 
So now it's like, well, I'm going to get whatever I can get while I'm here until I get to the next spot. Amen. So it, it made things uncertain. And a lot of people are uncertain today. What I have realized over the years, when the relationship is missing commitment and trust, there's no longer, it's not fruitful anymore. There's a major separation. Whether if you admit it or not, things are separated. Because when you're not committed to me and I'm not committed to you, they're not coming together. When I can't trust you and you can't trust me, they're not coming together. They're, 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 they're going apart. Whether if you want it to happen that way or not. That's what's happening. Amen? How did we get there? You know, a lot of people say, how did, how did I get here? How, how did this happen to me? It happened because you weren't doing the right thing. It, it happened because commitment is a component that is a strong component in any relationship. It's a strong component in God's relationship. It's a strong component in your work relationship. It's a strong component in your marriage. It's a strong component in your relationship. It's a strong component with your relationship with your children. It is a strong component that cannot be taken away. Amen. Amen? Amen? Human relationships can become strong relationships when you commit one to another. You know, I, I hear a lot of people today in, in this new generation, nobody wants to commit to anything. And, and, and when you deal with people who don't want to commit, you allow a lot of uncertainty into your life. Amen. That's true. Amen. I, I'm, I'm telling you what the Holy Spirit told me because I feel like he wants us to know this. Yes, Amen. Yes, Amen. Yes, Amen. Yes, you open the door for uncertainty. When God is very certain about everything that he does, he said, how can your faith be watered down to uncertainty, which is doubt? Then you cause God the inability to work in your life because now you have opened the door to uncertainty. And he says, a man that is double-minded is unstable in all of his ways. And when you are unstable in all of your ways, God said, I have nothing for you. The world wants you to be uncertain about everything so that the enemy can change your mind about everything. So that you forget the ways of God and start living the ways of the world. And the ways of the world only ends up in destruction. Can I get an amen? amen. See, I like that. Woo, girl, give me a little fire. That's right. That's right. Because I'm, I'm trying to tell you what the Holy Spirit is saying. He wants you to know this today. And see, the world wants to bring all of this uncertainty, uncertainty into your life, wants you to be wishy-washy, and you come into church, but you're still wishy-washy, you're still doubting, so the power of God cannot perform what he wants to perform in your life because you're not solid in Christ. Am I, am I telling you the truth today? Huh? See, God don't want you to be tricked. Nor do he want you to be fooled. Because he said, my ways are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The ways of God never change. Never. Never. Be aware <laughs> when a person is unsure about the commitment level in their life. A person that is unsure, do you really want them to be on your A-team? That's just a question for you. I'm, not, I'm throwing it out there. That's a question for you. Because the Bible says it's like minds. 
that bring forth yes. things of God. Yes. God has given us what we should do. A life of uncertainty is like a house that is built on sand. Yes. Can I can I tell y'all the truth today? Yes. See, what you you didn't you didn't get all this fine building, and you didn't put all this gorgeous furniture in there. Every type of remote you can think of, movie rooms, TV rooms. But guess what? When it rains and when the wind blows, so do your house fall down. Why? Because you did not build it on a solid rock. Right? So you cannot get mad at God because you did not follow instructions. When you follow instructions, it will happen exactly like how God. Now, open your Bibles to chap Matthews chapter 7, verse 24. We're going to read. Amen? Amen? We're going to talk about what Jesus was talking about. Amen? I'm, I'm just trying to tell you. See, in the kingdom, uncertainty does not work. See, your, your, your beautiful dress and your cool suit can't get you through the door. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Your suave talk is not going to be suave. Right? Amen. Talk is cheap. It's all about in how you walk in the things of God. Amen? Amen. I said Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. It says, therefore, whosoever hear these things of mine. This is Jesus talking. The writing is in red. When you see red writing, that's Jesus. Yes. Amen? He said, therefore, whosoever hear these things of mine and do them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Verse 25 says, and the rain descended... And the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. Your house is your vessel. Your house is your body. We're not talking about a house on uh, Northfield Street. We're not talking about a house on Noble Road. We're talking about a vessel, a house where the Holy Spirit wants to abide in your vessel. We're talking about your vessel that God is building up as a house. He wants your vessel on a solid rock so when the wind blow, you will not fall down. He wants you to be planted like a tree beside the rivers that your roots may grow out under. God works from the bottom to the top. God don't work from the top to the bottom. Amen? Amen? He said, I must build a strong foundation. And he said, your fruit will not wither. And you will receive it in your due season. He will give it to you in your due season. Now he go and talks about the hearer. He says, and everyone that hear these sayings of mine and do them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the wind blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Understand, if God don't build your house, it has not been built. Amen. 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 If you are not built on a foundation, a solid rock, believing that God is, believing that if God said it, it shall be, believing that being in covenant with God. See, those who come to church and do nothing are hearers. Those who come to church and hear the word and go back home and do nothing are hearers. They're not building their house on a solid rock. They're building their house on sand. And then when it don't work out, they get mad at God because then they say God didn't do what he should have done. When in actuality, you didn't do what God told you to do. Right? 
See, it's something about us that just don't want to follow directions. It is something about us, and I think that thing that's 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 bringing, that's coming between us and and, and God, is that flesh. Yes. Huh? See, I think that flesh don't want to obey God, and I think that flesh don't want to listen to God because the flesh want what it wants, when it wants, how it wants it, and and it wants it on a platter, and it never wants to listen to God because. Darkness could not comprehend the light. Right? So my question, if you are of light, why are you walking or listening to darkness? We got to we got to we got to ask ourselves what we doing? What 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 are we doing? How are we doing this thing? Because life gets real. And when it's your last day, it is real. And can't nothing be made up. Because however you live is how you live. Amen. And whatever you did is what you did. Amen. And if you didn't take the time upon yourself to get it right with God, it's nobody fault but your own. Because the Bible says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation. Don't worry about mine. Worry about yours. Right? Yeah. So we have to we have to listen to that. And we have to understand that. Now, God said he teaches us how to build this vessel. This solid rock, he teaches us how to build it. We build it with prayer. We build it with service unto the Lord. Yes, Pastor. Huh? You got to give service. Just because you show up don't mean nothing. You got to show up for service. Yes. You got to show up as a disciple. Yes. You got to show up as a witness. You got to tell somebody else about the good news. Amen. Right? Amen. Yeah. In James 1.22, it says, But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving all. Your own selves. He said, don't deceive yourself. Just because you hear the word doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Am I talking to anybody today? Just because you hear it. See, we, we, we need power. We, we need power. And, and I want to say this. What I feel that the Lord is saying to me is that we're, we're, we're getting it mixed up. See, we're, we're mixing the word with sin. Yes. See, see we, we're, we're stirring it all together and we want power, but power can't come with sin. That's right. See, you got to clean your hands. Yes. You, 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 you got to lift up clean hands. That's what the Bible says. You got to lift up holy hands. See, it, it doesn't matter how much you cry. I, I now figured out why our grandparents told us the more you cry, the less you appear. Because, see, your crying don't mean nothing to the devil. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because he'll tell you, cry some more and kill yourself. Cry some more and, and just be dead. Huh? Yeah, yeah. He, he wants to get you to that dark place. So that he can take you out. But God said, why are you allowing what I have given you to work with? Why aren't you using it? Amen. I have told you that you are the head and not the tail. That you are first and not last. You are above only and never beneath. You are not to come behind no good thing. Everything your hand touch, it should prosper. Why are you giving the enemy a foothold? Yeah. You need to start closing some of them doors. Yes. You got to start closing some of them doors. Yes. See, the enemy is taking you out because you got too many doors open. open. Yes, come on. Huh? You got to start looking in your life and you got to start shutting some doors. You got to stop giving him the authority to ramshack your life. You got to stop giving him the authority to overtake and overthrow your life. You got to stop giving him the anointing of power that you got, you exchange it for his lust. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Come on. Mm. Help us. Help 
You can't give away your porridge. That's right. You can't give away your portion that God gave you. See, Jacob was smart. He was like, you hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry. I, I, I got a big appetite. He said, well, give me your birthright. <laughs> that little voice say, you want some money? Yeah. Well, give me your birthright. When God have already said, I am Jehovah Jireh, the God that is your provider. I provide everything that you need. So why would you have to go outside of me? Didn't my son show you after fasting for 40 days and the enemy tried to tempt him with bread? And he told him, no, as it is, my father, as it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Father. See, you got to start back speaking to the devil with the words of God. You are not defeated. Your mind is just carnal. I got to tell the truth. Because when you renew your mind, it starts thinking like God. When you renew your mind, it starts thinking on things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are above, things that God has told us to think on. Yes. Right? Yes. See, you know, you have the power, but the question is, do you want to use the power? Yes. 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 Jude one twenty four says, now unto him. That is able to keep you from falling. Do you really believe it? Yes. Do you really believe it? Yes. <laughs> and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. See, let me tell you something. When the devil beat up on me, I ain't going home crying. I'm going back to get with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And I asked him, what did I do right that time? Hallelujah. Anoint me. You said that when the enemy come in like the flood, you was going to raise the standards. I need you to raise these standards. I need you to supernaturally empower me. I need you to make me to be who you said I am. You said I was an overcomer. You said I am more than a conqueror. You said I am mighty in the spirit. You said if you be for me, who can be against me? You said that I have the victory, that the battle has already been won, so why am I losing? See, I don't know about nobody else, but I ain't going to lose. He might beat me up a few times. But he's not going to beat me up all the time. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to give me some scars, but I'm going to give him some scars back in Jesus' name. Because, see, I'm just like my daddy. He told me, get back in that ring and go do it again. See, when you, when you contend with the world, you begin to learn the world. You ask God, give me a spirit of discernment. Everybody that's around you is not your friend. Everybody that's around you is not happy for you. Everybody around you... Don't really Come on. honor you. Come on. Come on. Hmm? Yes. You have to know that. Because see, our father, he has some children. And so do Satan. Come on. Come on. Yes. And see, Satan sends his kids on an assignment mm -hmm. to try to take you out. Yes. And, and if you bite it, if you take a little bit of it, you can't beat the devil. That's right. Huh? I always sing that song, I just meant to wet my feet, but you pulled me in. Huh? See, see, you don't need to contend with the devil when God didn't already fought the battle for you. See, you 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 allowing for the world things to overtake you when you are supposed to overtake the world things. Right? You 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 can't be solid unless you in God. You got to be in God to be solid. It, it doesn't work that way. We talk about, in Psalms 103, it talks about, let's not forget the benefits of God. We look at the benefits in the world, but have you looked at the benefits of God? Have you looked at what God has done for you right now? You got your feet. 
You got your hand. You in your right mind. You done had some food. You got shelter. You got a car. You got... Have you looked at what God has done for you this day? This yeah, breathing, huh? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. See, when you can't rejoice in God, that's because the devil is too much on you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Come on. Can I tell the truth? Tell the truth. The devil just shut your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you would have gave God some praise, the heaviness would have went away. Yeah. See, I learned, you got to learn how to fight the spiritual battle. Yeah. When you're feeling sad and you want to cry, you start clapping your hands, you start yeah. stomping your feet, and you start praising the Lord, and he got to flee. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. See, you can't make him flee, but the Lord can make him flee. Yeah. Right? You got to begin to use your warfare. Our warfare is not carnal. Our warfare is not a gun. It's, it's not some brass knuckles. It's not spray. But it's the pulling down of the strongholds. It's the spirit of God. The power of God. Right now in this time, we need to be walking with God more than we have ever walked with him in our lives. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. See, when you can take him or leave him, it won't be long before you leave him. Amen. 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 When you allow the world to get you off your course with God. Because see, when you recognize, I told you about the worker in the 30 years in the gold ring. They went to work and they were on time. Yeah. Right? They were on time. Matter of fact, before time. They were there. When you have made this exchange with God to receive his compensation, see, how you realize and evaluate your priorities with God is how you treat God. Huh? Are you early for God or are you late for God? Are you on time for God or are you not on time? Are you focused or are you unfocused? Are you serving or are you not serving? Did you forget what church used to be? See, church is an institution that God is holding us responsible to keep open. Because we are supposed to be the beacon light for those who then got beat up by the world. Now they need to come under the refuge, under the feathers of the almighty wings of God, where they can be restored, redeemed. Am I talking to anybody in here? Yes. Somebody held the door open for you. Amen. Somebody held the door open so you could come through. Now, you got to hold the door for somebody else to come through. Amen. God has made us to be a, he blessed us to be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Thank Lord. Am I, am I, am I talking good y'all? Yes. Huh? Bring the word. Bring the word. Am I, am I talking good? Yes. Yes. Uh, amen. See that, that makes me feel so good. Yes. See now, let me, let me tell you why. Um, Paul, I mean, I'm sorry, wow, David was a man after God's own heart. Because, see, David, he knew how to worship the Lord. Yes. David knew how to go in, into his presence. David understood, without God, I'm nothing. Yes. He understood, if I praise God, he's going to bring me out. He understood if I worship God, he's going to tell me what I'm doing wrong. He's going to lead and guide and direct me. And see, it, it, it amazes me that when your mind is not following God, your mind does not tell you that you are disobedient to God. Right. Or your mind might say, God can't see you. Oh, come on, <laughs> because if you was aware if you knew God could see you some of the things you wouldn't do <laughs> some of the things you wouldn't do so your mind block it out so that you can do the things that is not pleasing to God right see your mind works it's a powerful thing 
it is a powerful tool. Yes. And you have to be careful how you use your mind concerning the things of God. Now, David in Psalms 103, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. He said, Bless him with all that is within me. Some of us give, some of us give God 10%. Some of us give God 30%. Some give God 50%. But when we going to give God all? Amen. When we going to give him all? All. He said, I, I bless the Lord with all of my soul and everything that is within me. Lord, I am giving you my all. See, I don't know about you, but see, I can't come into praise and worship and don't give him his portion. I can't come into praise and worship and don't praise him. See, I'm going to lift up my hands because I still have them. Amen? Amen. And I, 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 I want to connect with him. I want to talk with him. I want to be in covenant with him. I want him to continue to guide, lead, direct, and order my footsteps. See, what I, what I want to tell you is that when you make God your solid rock, he is your rock. Yes, Amen? Amen? He is your rock. You can keep it open, honey. You can keep it open. He is your rock. You know, 30 years ago, I made a commitment back to the Lord that I will commit 30 years ago. Amen. Now, I didn't say that I didn't fall off because the Lord came to visit me at 15. And because nobody could understand me, nobody could understand why I was speaking in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> and the Holy Spirit was following on me. They thought I was crazy, amen? They didn't understand spiritual things. So I said, well, you know, since can't nobody tell me what's going on, I'm going to go back to the world. But you know what? God had a lot of mercy. Because, see, I, I could have been gone. Because the devil wanted to get rid of me because he knew who I was. Do you understand what I'm saying? He knew that God had, had put a message in my mouth. That he had called me to, to preach the word that souls might be saved. See, the enemy, he's not looking at nobody who's serving him. He's looking at those who are taking people out of his kingdom. He, he's looking for those who are serving God that's going to do the right thing. You get me? And I told God, you have to make a decision. I did not say, Lord, if you do this, I'm going to do that. No, when I decided... And when I made the commitment 30 years ago, 30 years ago, I made it with restrictions. I don't know. Y'all might not be ready to hear that yet. Because, you know, some of us want God in this hand and we want the world in this hand. Right? We, 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 want, we want both of them. But see, when you really want the anointing and the power on your life, you got to have God in both of these hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to begin to move towards God. You, you got to come into real covenant with God in order for God to have the power. Oh, yeah. He got to trust you. You got to commit and trust. Right? And, and I trusted God. And the Lord began to close down doors to my life. Do you hear what I'm saying? See, you know, God will give you time to play. But when he's ready for you, <laughs> when he starts chasing you, <laughs> you will know he's chasing after you. huh? Because he don't give you no rest when he's chasing you. You, you. you can't get no peace when he's chasing you. You can't find comfort nowhere you go when he's chasing you. And he said, I chase those that I love. I chase those that I have a calling upon their life. I chase those who I have called with a purpose. Right? He's called you with a purpose. I made a promise to God and I understood don't make a vow that you cannot keep. If you make a vow to God, then you need to keep the vow that was made. I, for 30 years, I have kept the vow that I have made to God. I promised God I would be a servant all the days of my life because he kept me and he brought me out of my pit of despair. He picked me up out of the dark place. I don't know where y'all came from, but I came from a dark place, okay? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I wasn't born saved. 
I had to get saved. Amen. And, and in the process of all of that, he began to teach me his ways. Because I did not turn away. I told God, I will serve you all the days of my life. I, I, I have now come into the true knowledge of God. See, when you come into the real knowledge of God and the true knowledge of God, you can serve God all the days of your life and you don't feel like it's a punishment. You don't feel like it's a chore. It, he, he brings it into you for goodness and happiness and joy. Right? He gives us a goodly life. Right? He said, I'll give you a goodly home. I'll do for you what nobody else can do. Now, why would we transfer the benefits of God? What I have noticed, children that are raised in church, they're different than children that are not raised in church. Is that true, y'all? You can't... <laughs> At least our parents had enough sense to send us to church. <laughs> Maybe they didn't go, but they had enough sense to send us to church so that the word of God could get down on the inside of us, knowing that the Bible of Proverbs says that train up a child in a way that he should go, because when he parts, because you will part, he'll be able to find his way back. A lot of kids can't find their way back because they have not been trained up. The best thing any of us can do for our children is to train them in the adoration of the Lord. Yes. You know, our parents even told us, make sure you put on clean underwear every day because you might get into an accident and go to the hospital and you shouldn't go with dirty underwear. Huh? Isn't that what our parents taught us? I don't know why it's not going on for generation to generation because some of the panties is dirty. They black. Huh? Did you have them on all week or what? Huh? Help us. Help us. We didn't learn about change the panties? Huh? I mean, we got to begin to teach. We're, 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 we're separating because there's no teaching. True. And, and our parents used to teach us, clean up your bedroom. Yes. Because if I die, you need to be able to live with somebody else. Yes. Isn't that what they taught us? Yes. Where are we going this way? We, we, the things that we were taught, we're not passing them down. The things that we were taught, we, I, I don't know. I, I don't get being your friend. I, I, I don't want to drink with you. And I don't want to smoke with you. I don't want to be your friend. I'd like to be your parent. I, I got to be who God has called me to be. I, I, I don't get that. I, I, I'm 60 years old. What I look like, somebody 30 years old, we sitting over here smoking a blunt. What, 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 what does that look like? Help us, Lord. Help us. Huh? Help us. You know, now this here is funny. You're going to laugh about this. Because, see, I just couldn't believe it. We had these tenants. And the grandmother was in her 90s. And every time I would stop over there, she would be in a wheelchair like this. So I'm feeling like she's about on her last leg. And so Pastor said, uh-uh, that woman ain't on her last leg. I said, what you talking about? He said, I'm going to take you up here and show you something. He said, when I go fix this porch, he said, and then when the sun go down, the woman stood up. She said, what we drank in the night? <laughs> talking about what y'all going to drink tonight when you ought to be talking about what scripture you're going to be standing on, talking about making heaven and not going to hell and talking about eternal life. Amen. And you talking about what we going to drink tonight. 
I tell you, I was outdone when I said that. I, I was totally outdone. <laughs> All day long, she slumped over like this. But at nighttime, how many know that those spirits come alive in the dark? Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Them spirits come alive when it get dark, don't they? Uh -huh. The spirits give you all the energy to do anything you need to do when it gets dark. Preach about it. Help us. Help us. And see, that's, that, that may have been why our parents told us to come home when the street lights come that's on. That's right, that's right, that's right. Because too much happened in the darkness. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, so, yes. so David said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all my benefits. He said, don't forget what I've done from you. Don't forget that I've taken you out of a dark place and brought you into my marvelous light. Don't forget that I have saved you. I've given you mercy after mercy after mercy. I have given you grace to overcome all the things that you're doing in life. Don't forget what I have done for you. Thank you, Lord. Huh? Thank you. What I see is people are in a slumber. They're in a stupor. And God doesn't want you to be in a stupor. You got to run this race. And you got to run it swift. You have to know the word of God and you have to stand on the word of God. You have to quote the word. You have to get in prayer. If you don't have a prayer life, I admonish you to get one today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Prayer will do for you and change what you can. Prayers will outlive your lifetime. Yes. Amen. Prayer will do more for you than what you can do. Yes. When we sit prayer at the ears of God, yes. it, it begins to move things. And sometimes things don't happen until after you're gone. But God is still answering your prayers. Amen? Amen? He's still answering your prayers. You, I have a cousin. His mom prayed for him and prayed for him and prayed for him and prayed for him. Now he's a pastor. She's gone on and she can't see. She probably see from heaven. But God did answer her prayer. Amen. God wants you to be fortified. He wants you to be smart. He wants you to be the head. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta stand up with authority. Hallelujah. When you come into Rome, you're supposed to change the whole atmosphere. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not talking to anybody in here. Yes. You're supposed to walk, walk with confidence yes. that God yes. got your back. Yes. Thank you, right? Lord. Thank you. He says, Thank "Who forgive all thy iniquities? Who heal all my diseases?" Thank you. That's in God's benefit package. He heals all of our diseases. And he forgives us for all of our iniquities. He said, and your sin never meets as the east is from the west. So why hold yourself in condemnation? Hallelujah. Why walk with shame? You don't have to walk with shame. And you don't have to walk with condemnation. What you should do is pick back up your cross. Hallelujah. You should pick back up your cross. Amen. And, and, and let the devil know, I made it back home. <laughs> I made it back home Yeah I made it back home You should have killed me when I was out there But since you didn't get me Now I'm going to destroy your works Do you hear what I'm saying we're, we're in a battle You're in a battle whether if you want to be or not It doesn't matter So why not be on the winning side Amen You don't have time to be feeling pitiful Pity can't pay no bills yeah. Pity can't buy no food. Hallelujah. And pity can't pay no rent. Hallelujah. So why be pitiful? That's right. See, the Lord said, recognize the mistake that you made. And when you recognize the mistake that you made, repent, pick back up your cross and keep it moving. He redeems all the time. He redeems all the time. All the time for everybody. Now, he goes on to say in verse 4, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tenderness and mercies, who satisfy 
thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is in is renewed like an eagle. The benefits of God you cannot beat. You can't beat his benefit package. God gives you long life. He gives you good life. He restores your life. He redeems your life. He put life in you. Huh? Huh? He, he, he yields it to you, right? He does all these things, right? And I, I, my, my question is, why aren't you serving him? Why aren't you serving him? See, he said, don't be a hearer. Be a doer. What good, is you, what good is it to hear the word of God and not have the power of God? You know, you got to do it so you can have the power so that you can walk in the things of God. Let me tell you this. See, it's not beneficial for me to always lay hands on you. And I'm going to tell you why it's not beneficial. Because you don't have enough word in you to keep it. See, you, you, you get relief for a minute. And them same demons is waiting by your car door to get back in. <laughs> can, can I tell you the truth? <laughs> see, see, you got to fortify. God said, build your house on a rock. So when you build it on a rock and when you get hands laid on you or a mantle transferred to you or a purpose from God imparted in you, you can keep it. You can't keep the things of God with an empty vessel. The only thing that happens is you tire me out. And I'm not going to be tired out. You're going to get on your knees. Come on. Come on. And you're going to lay prostate on your face. That is it. That's the answer. And you're going to cry out, Abba yes. Father, yes. until yes. you get up yes. off the altar, yes. speaking in tongues, and I want to see some snot coming out your nose, yes. and I want to see some tears coming out your eyes, yes. and I want to see some tongues on your tongue. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's how the old mothers made us do it. They didn't want to hear nothing you was talking about. Get down. Go to the altar. Get down on your knees. Start praying. Call on the name of Jesus. There is real power in the name of Jesus. When you start calling on the name of Jesus, whatever is shackling you, it got to loose you. Let me tell you something. There is nothing on this earth that can overtake you, overthrow you, because the power of God, the blood of God will wash you, cleanse you, heal you, and restore you, and make you new. You only weak because you ain't been lifting no weights. Come on, come on. And and change the W from weights to the word. Amen. Huh? Amen. See, you you got to read. You got to eat this thing. Yes. You got to work this thing. You 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 have to absorb this in you. See, let me tell you something. See, the enemy is crafty. And and let me say this: when you commit to God. How do you allow another person to cause you to stop serving God? Huh? Be mad at me all day long, but don't stop serving God. Amen. Get angry with me, but keep your covenant with God. Huh? See, I don't care who make me mad. If somebody making me mad, I'm like, well, God, uh, are you? They got, is, that, is that my sandpaper? <laughs> do I need a side smooth? Oh yeah, we need side smooth. Oh yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. We need confrontation. We need somebody to get right in our face and tell us the real deal. Oh yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We all have to be rebuked. Every last one of us. Church has nothing to do with political correct. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Has nothing to do with that. Hallelujah. Nothing. Nothing at all. So why allow your emotions to get you out of the wheel? That's good. Huh? Because I'm mad at you, I ain't gonna preach today, Pastor. Oh, the devil's a lie. Huh? Huh? What? 
Because I'm mad. I can't do what the father then told me to do. Because I'm upset, I throw God down on the floor. Huh? I, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Do you really have a real relationship? You know what? Some of the relationships I've seen people with God, I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want it as a natural person. <laughs> I'm being serious. I wouldn't want it. Because, you know, everything is gauged to God. Yes. You, you, Everything is evaluated. He said, I am the rock. Yes. I am the rock. Yes. I'm telling you, uncertainty, get it out of your life. When you have a lot of people around you that are uncertain, now you are uncertain. Be true. Help somebody. Uncertainty. Well, I think this. I think that. Oh, maybe it can be this. Oh, well, I like you. I don't want to make no commitment to you. You know, I think Beyonce said it the best. Well, if you like it, you should have put a ring on it. Uh -huh. right. Ain't that what she said? Yeah. If you like it, you should have put a ring on it. Amen. And if you didn't want to put a ring on it, then you need to keep on stepping. Amen. See, people don't like to hear stuff like that. <laughs> they don't like to hear Amen. stuff like that. huh? Because you know what? You got to be committed. And you got to want to be responsible. You have to want to, you, you have to have certain. Pastor and I, we have a non-negotiable policy. Amen. And our non-negotiable policy is divorce is not an option. Amen. We have to grow up. Okay? We got to grow up. I'm mad today. You mad tomorrow. We better be glad the next day. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. See, when you get a non-negotiable policy, when you always have the opportunity to walk out the door, Come on, help somebody that's somebody you shouldn't let back in the door. Because that's part of their character. Always leaving. The only thing that changes is the face. I don't know if y'all want all that meat today. <laughs> I don't know if y'all want help all that meat us. today. Us. It's the truth. Help us. It's the truth. Help us. Right? We didn't get married because we had googly eyes or I love you and you love me. No, we, we made a decision that we were good for each other. We made a decision that we could help each other. We made a decision that we would be committed to each other. See, you know what? We don't play games with phones. Come on. Okay? He got my pass. I got his pass. Well, no, and, no and you don't have no phone and can't nobody get in it but you. Because when can't nobody get in it but you, you got something going on in it. Huh? It's the truth anyhow. It's the truth anyhow. Right? Right? See, see, your secrets will soon find you out. What's in the dark will come to light. See, you got to be want to be committed. If you don't want to be committed, then be woman or man enough to say, I'm not ready. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good. Is that good? Ain't nobody clapping. They're like. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, right? Why, why add misery to your life? Don't add misery to your life. Yes and, no. yes and no. That's right. That's right. That's right. See, you got a, a person who is making a commitment. That is a person that will do. That's a doer. A doer. Yes. A committed person is a doer. Yes. A person who got to think all the time, they are a hearer. You better divide the people up in your life. Separate your doers and put your hearers over here. And those that are hearers, you need to push them back a little far. Because they need to be in the oven till they get cooked. They still undone. It's the truth anyhow. It's the truth anyhow. We don't have problems in our house. Right, Pastor? We're too old for problems. Right. Too old. We're too old to have a home without peace. We are too old to talk about, well, you got to give me two more dollars. Well, you didn't pay five dollars on the light bill. What you mean? Hmm. <laughs> what, what, what you talking about? What you talking about? Everything got to be half and half. What, what you talking about? Huh? Hmm. See, don't nobody want to hear that. Nobody's like, mm, yeah, it is half and half. What you talking right. about? 
Huh? I thought you put the. I thought you put it all together. If you married, now I ain't talking about no uh, my my boyfriend and my girlfriend. I, I no, I'm, we don't put nothing together, cause we ain't together, cause we ain't signed on no line, and until we sign on the line, ain't nothing going together. Amen. 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 And if we ain't married, ain't no ironing no shirts. That ain't going down either. It ain't no dinner going to be on no table every day. Right. You're going to date me, babe. You're going to take me to dinner, not come over my house for dinner. Right. <laughs> You're going to take me to dinner. Right. Huh? Now, when we get married, then I need to do my wifely duties. That's when I do them, not before time. My mother taught me, don't start nothing you can't finish, girl. So I look at everything. If I can't finish it, I can't start it. <laughs> but when I can finish, I, I start. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. I know what I'm getting when I get him, and he know what he's getting when he get me. But see, it's a terrible thing when you get something and you don't know what you got. Preach it. Ain't that the truth, y'all? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, God don't want us to be crazy. He don't want us to be stupid. He want us to know better. He want us to know better. Amen? We're going to build our house on a solid rock. A solid rock. It don't matter who come or go. We're going to stay. And going to be planted in God. Amen? Going to be planted in the things of God. I tell you, when you get consistent with God, you get consistent in life. And when you get consistent in life, you can then go from glory to glory and faith to faith. And see, the good thing about that is that it don't matter what didn't happen in your life. See, if you start reading Psalms 37, God tell you, stop looking at the man over there with the bling bling. Because all of that evil stuff is going to be cut down. It's going to wither down like grass. Stop wanting all of that. Let me build you. Because what I'm going to give you is going to be eternal. What I'm going to give you is going to last. What I'm going to do for you, you're going to have. Don't you know? what man makes it breaks yes, it does. right so we, we have to let God build us and let God make us everything we gauge God gave me a saying years ago now I say it both ways he said if a man cheat on God he'll cheat on you and if a woman cheat on God she'll cheat on you base her him according to God yes Ain't that right? That's for Amen. a believer. He said, don't be unevenly yoked. That's right. Amen. See, because see, something's going to go wrong if I'm at home re reading the Bible and you in the club. All right. All right. Some, something's going to go wrong. Yeah, it is. Some, something ain't going to be right. At all. Because see, I'm going to be at home reading the Bible and Sue going to be over there talking to you. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? And eventually, if you keep going back, you might be having a drink with Sue. Huh? I, you might be with Sue, huh? Yeah, that's how those tag-alongs get on, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, some people are willing to settle for less. They don't care about you being married. Just come visit me one day a week. So don't, be, don't have such a low self-esteem. Because you are a child of a royal priesthood. And if you will follow the things of God, he will send to you exactly what you need. Exactly what you need. And it will be yours. Right. It won't be a headache. Amen. See, I ain't going to be taking no Excedrin every day. No. <laughs> no. No, I'm too old for that. <laughs> 60 years old. No, you're supposed to have a life of peace. See, see, we, we riding on grace, baby. We riding on grace. We're going to grace this life right on out. Because no stresses. No stressors. Amen. No. Uh -uh. But see, when you deal with people that are uncertain... That's where all your stressors come from. Jesus. When you deal with people that are doubtful, yes. that's where no trust come from. Woo, Jesus. When you deal with people who can't make up their mind, yes. that's where all instability comes from. Yes. You hear me? Yes. And you all know this. And I, I told you to write this down. Write it down. You need to gauge people like that. Get people in your life that's solid. Get people in your life that are Christians, that are of a solid rock, that have good character, good integrity. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this here probably sound like jumble jumble. No, it doesn't. 
Chinese. Truth. It's the truth. Yeah. But the truth, the truth it don't always get you excited. See, I like that. She said it don't always get you excited. But at, at some point, we have to learn. Jesus went into the temple at 12 years of age. And he went to go learn of his father. And you all have to learn of your father. So that the same mistakes won't keep happening. Because what will happen, the same mistake will happen, the person will just be different. That's true. You, you got to pass the test. And until you pass the test, you go through the same story. Jesus. It's just a new face Jesus. in the place. Exactly. I tell the Lord, uh-uh, show me. I listen. I ain't ADHD. Amen? Amen? So we understand that the benefit of the package, we have to get back out here, y'all. We got to get back out here and disciple people. We got to get back out here and tell them about God. Because they didn't forget about Jesus. Yes. Amen? Amen? So we got to tell them that there is a solution. There's a solution to your problem. And his name is Jesus. Amen. There is a healing for your body. And his name is Jesus. And if you're in school and you need some smart, there's some knowledge for you. His name is Jesus. Right? He gives you all wisdom, all knowledge. And all understanding. Yes, yes, right? Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So don't feel sorry for yourself. Amen. I told you, pity can't pay for nothing. Amen. Pity can't, pity can't, pity can't even buy you a hamburger. Pity is pity. Yes. <laughs> but that's what the devil wants. And see, we have a tendency to sob in our mistakes. But God don't want you to sob in your mistakes. We have a tendency to feel bad about our past. God does not want you to feel bad about your past. See, when you keep looking at your past, that's nothing but a devil's workshop. Because you can't change anything that has happened. But you can move forward. Paul told you the best. He said, reach for things that are forward. Stop grabbing for things that are behind you. You ain't got time to look at nothing that's in back of you. You got time to look at what's in front of you. God has called you to a mission. God has called you to a purpose. God has anointed you and appointed you and called you by name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And it's time for the called to get busy. Amen. It is time for the call to serve the Lord. I guarantee you, you won't be sorry. Amen. If you start serving God, if you start serving the Lord, you will not be sorry. Because there's something about when you serve God and you thought that arthritis was going to take over. God said, arthritis, you better get back. Because I still have need of this person. I still need for them to move in the kingdom of God. I still need work of them. Let me tell you something. When God has his hand on your life. Nothing is going to happen to you. I don't care what's going on in your life. God is a provider. He will provide for you. When God has need of you, when he has use for you, God will push back everything from you so that he can get to you because he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. People don't talk about love anymore. But God is love. And you can't be a part of God unless you do love. That's right. No stony hearts, but a heart of flesh. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. He says in, verse, in Psalms 133, I'm almost done. He says in Psalms 103, verse 11, he says, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. His mercy is great towards you. You hear me? I want you to go back and look over this video. And I want you to really get it down in your heart. I want you to close the door. Every door that you have opened for the enemy. I told you start closing them. Amen. Close them, close them. The Bible says, give the enemy no 
foothold. Amen. Amen. Amen? Not one. Don't give him no foothold. I'm telling you, if you are not doing right, repent and start today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. In verse 17, he said, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandment to do them we have to remember to do the commandments amen, amen. see pastor tell you and I'm, I'm going to end with that because see i made a covenant with god and i don't care who here and who ain't here i'm gonna be, I'm gonna be right here amen. right I get up, don't I? I don't feel good. I get up. I get up. I be like, Lord, help me through this day. I go get in that shower. And I say, what you want me to say to your people today? I put my clothes on. See, you know what? God saved my life. I should be dead. He saved my life. The doctors couldn't find what the enemy was trying to destroy me with. But God said, you will not be destroyed because I'm not done with you yet. And see, I, I, I have to honor that. And I have to thank God for, for allowing me to still be here. Huh? See, you cannot take what he do for you for granted. You got to respect it. You got to respect it. God has picked us all up and bought us somewhere. Every Sunday morning, I'm on my way out the door. I see people cutting their grass. I'm like, mm, not on the Lord's day. <laughs> uh, you do what you do. I do church. I do God. I'm going to go do God. That is what that is what has bought me all of these years. <coughs> That's what has kept me. That's what has kept me from falling is God being my solid rock. And I'm extending it to you for God to be your solid rock that you may flourish with your fruit and that it will fall in your due season amen amen, amen. 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 so at this time let me ask is there anyone in here is there anyone that want to rededicate their lives back to the lord want ready to get on the mission field ready to get back and do work need to reconcile back with God is there one 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 hallelujah thank you Jesus yes Lord yes Facebook yes Facebook, we're going to get ready to say goodbye. At this time, if you like, you can go to anointedgates.org and you can pay your tithes. You can bless the ministry, help the ministry, give an offering to the ministry. If you need a call, you need prayer, dial 216-249-5811. And a live voice will call you back. We love you. Have a blessed, blessed day.